Three, two, one, let's go! He's like, I never knew nipples could be this emotionally deep. Oh my god. And one of them came from that guy's dick, too. Oh yeah. Why did I do this to everybody? <laughs> We're about to open up a whole can of spoilers. Right, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, CJ. Here with me is Roberto. Yo. What's up, Clucker? What's up? And our returning guest from last week, uh, Sean Roy Shadow. Hello, everybody. So, uh, what this podcast is, for people who don't know, it works like an anime book club. We recommend anime and manga, watch and read it, talk about it. I'm sure people understand what we do by now. Um, huge spoiler warning for everything. Like, we talk about stuff and forget to say spoiler warning for that anime half the time. And we are heavily spoiling Ori Twin Twills, Ni Narimas, and uh, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer today. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, specifically uh, chapters 9 through 16. Um, so with the the agenda, we're going to be talking about those two. Then we're going to be uh, going into other anime and manga we've been watching and reading throughout the week. And then after that, we're going to be going to our random topic of the day, which we decided uh, to talk about what is our least favorite genre today, which I think everybody knows what mine is, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, so cool. Uh, let's get uh, Sean, if you want to go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and everything, since you're not one of the usual people on here. Right, right. Okay, no problem. Um, so I guess the biggest thing of what I do besides being an anime enthusiast is speedrun games. Um, I usually speedrun Mega Man Zero, and I have my eyes set on Bastion actually. I just saw a couple runs last night, and it looked pretty fun. Plus, I I think it's only like twenty minutes on average. Like if you're really really bad, it's around that time. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and that's I guess about it. All right, cool. Oh, let's uh. Let's go ahead and get started with the the discussion here, then. Um, yeah, Sean, since you recommended us this fucking anime, let's get you to try, <laughs> at least attempt to describe what the fuck it is, because I still don't know. Okay, so, um, Ode Twin Tails Nenimas, or I Want to Be the Twin Tails. Uh, let's see. So, <clears throat> it's... <laughs> Can you describe shoot. it? I See, that's what I'm just wondering. Uh, <laughs> for genre, let's say comedy. Um, it, uh... It it's like a Magical Girl parody. Pretty much, yeah, because it takes place in this universe where, like, you can have, like, armor or just, like, gear that is stronger based off of what you love and how much you love it. And this it actually... very creepy. Yes, although you think it would be, oh, cool, so, like, I love swords, so, like, it would be swords. No, no, this this anime focuses on fetishes and stuff. There there are tentacles, and there are, <laughs> and there are, like, just, it's, yeah, it's a bunch of weirdness. Uh, if you want to know about the plot, um, there are three girls, they fight things. There you go. You were caught up with the plot. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it, really. Yep. And, yeah, that's that's about it. Do, do tell, why did you recommend this? Because I still don't know. <laughs> Um, to be honest, it was mostly just because, like, hmm, let me think of an anime that, like, people probably haven't watched. <laughs> um, probably for good reason. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I'd actually only seen the first four episodes, I think, when I recommended it. And I was like, this is really silly, derpy. I don't really understand what's going on, but maybe it'll get better. <laughs> but I yep. think, as we all figured out, it doesn't. <laughs> At least it was better than Saber Marionette, so. <laughs> I could at least watch this one fine. I just couldn't understand what the fuck was going on half the time. Right, so, right. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Clicker, what do you think of this? Because I still oh don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This, I, I, j okay. So, the best way I can describe this series is by comparing it with another series that's very different. And the other series, I think, did it in a much better way. So there was a lot of times in this series where I was like, what the fuck is going on? And the other series I did that with was Samurai Flamenco, because all of a sudden it was like, what the fuck, what just happened? Oh wait, now we're in this crazy shit. Oh wait, what the fuck, now what just happened? Yeah, that that is probably the anime I kept comparing it to the most when I was watching it, except Samurai Flamenco like, actually has a direction it's going. It doesn't yeah. seem like it at all. But, but eventually like, it, it does. Yeah. Um, this one didn't have that, which was made me sad. Um, 
This seemed I, like just like a, a a poor attempt at a rip off of Samurai Flamingo, kind of like. At, at times it did, but at times it just felt like they were just doing whatever they felt like because maybe that I don't know. I don't know why they did what they did, but they just did it. I wish I could know why um, they did this. Oh God, I do. I wish I could meet the the people who created this and ask why. And if yeah. they say because money, I'll just I'll just be like. It's probably it's just, because money. And yeah, this is what's wrong sense. with the world. <laughs> yeah. Um like as, as we were talking about like before the podcast here, and this is pretty much the most like because Japan anime like any of his any of us have ever seen. Like oh, Yeah. God. It's yeah, there it, there's a ton of stuff in that like like all the tentacle stuff that happened, God, oh my, like oh my all Lord. the goddamn tentacles. There was no reason for that. <laughs> there and wasn't. Of course, there was. Yeah, reason for especially it. when they introduced tentacles with hands. Really, yeah, that was the really fucking that? creepy shit, man. Like little tentacles with little tiny stubby <laughs> hands at the end of them. It's like, what the fuck? Why would you do this? Really? <laughs> Just ah. Uh... So one like of them that. came from that guy's dick too. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I, I remember don't, seeing don't that. Don't remind me. God! Ah! <laughs> oh, in that memory. That's that's how yes, much you do. can tell Klecker loved it. Ah! <laughs> like I don't know this this thing just seemed to try and attempt to pack in as many like references at least at minimum references to like different fetishes and stuff, and half the time they were just like just like. The, the fucking bad guys had them as, like, part of their, like, attacks and everything. It was all based on, like, what their fetishes were. And it's like, what the fuck? No. Why are you doing this? <laughs> oh. I feel dirty after watching that. Pretty sure everyone does. Yeah, even I did. I was just like, I... I why did I do this to everybody? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question, Sean. <laughs> What'd you think of it, Roberto? I mean, I guess I'll stand with the consensus that it was extremely weird, but I did laugh a lot, though. I'll, gr- I'll give it that. Just mine the mine were usually the laughs, like, oh god, no, what the fuck? There was one There was one moment where I had a pretty genuine laugh when he was uh, following the, the student council president as he was trying to buy a porno magazine, Yeah. and then the, the guy in the owl costume pops out yes. as an owl. <laughs> that part there. was amazing. <laughs> I lost like, my all, shit. All the, all the bad guys, um, for those who don't know, are based off of different animals and creatures like lizards and snakes and a variety of things. And one of them was based off of an owl. And to try to conceal his presence and hide so that we can like find people or whatever, he was in an owl costume, like mascot <laughs> costume. Oh man, I lost my shit on that. <laughs> yeah, that was like one of the actual genuine funny moments of the anime. Like you just see him take off the owl hat, uh, their owl head or whatever, and it's still yeah. just an owl. <laughs> and then he jumps out of it and he's just a super ripped owl. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh god. Shows like this are why I wish I could just turn off my brain sometimes, because I probably would have enjoyed this a lot more in that, that situation. Like, I probably would have too. I would have enjoyed if, God, so many cringing moments. I yeah, there was a so lot much. of those. Yeah, but I cringe way more than you guys by a lot. By like a lot, a lot. Yeah, uh, man. So do do we want to go into like a little more specifics of the show and everything? I I think so. All right, because um, actually, go ahead, Roberto. See what you can do. Oh well. So I was still kind of interested about Twirl and where she came from and why this group of aliens were doing what they were doing. They never really established that. It's kind of just like, oh, we're going around stealing shit, and this time it just happens to be Twin Tails. Well, it was, uh, it was because of what they fed on. Yeah. They lived off of it and shit. But I feel like they had a bit a better purpose than just that. No. Yeah. No, not after watching the rest of that anime. That's, <laughs> that's about all you get, man. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but yeah, like the the main guy, fucking weird man. Like he 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 straight up has a fetish for like uh pigtails or twin tails as they call it in the anime, and like it's 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 something that drives him to live so much that he's actually like pretty much a magical girl because of that. With like this thing that fucking whatever the fuck her name is gives him what's Twirl. her name? 
Toro. Toro, oh, okay. Yeah, Toro. Yeah. yeah, she she gives him this bracelet thing that lets him fight all the evil guys and everything. Whenever he uses it, it turns him into not just a girl with like twin tails and shit, but a fucking lolly. It's like, what's that necessary, really? Like <laughs> it fan service it was. Actually let me let me pull up the exact thing I said to the guys in Skype here, because I, I kind of talked them through like watching this. Like while I was watching it and everything. Let's see if I can find this. Uh hold on. It's here somewhere. Maybe not. Please continue while I'm trying to find this. <laughs> yeah. And then you had his his really annoying best friend also. Oh, seriously. Yeah, Jesus. Like, if she, she was... wasn't beating up on Twirl, she was being, you know, being a t- her. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how to put like, that. She, yeah, she was, like, extremely violent, like, more more so to the point that, like, it kind of wasn't funny at times. It's kind of just like, uh, Yeah. She was it's... extremely and utterly jealous. I mean, she no... took that gag too for, far. Yeah, for, for no reason at all. Yeah. Yeah, if she had just, like, even reached out to the guy at all... She probably would have got him fine. Oh, yeah. Like, there there was no reason for him not to, really. Because, I mean, the main thing he loves in a girl, she had pretty damn good ones and everything. Yep. By that, I'm talking about the twin tails, not the boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the other that. joke. She didn't have any boobs. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was true. That, yeah, that came up a lot. Which, I, it seems like he's indifferent about pretty much everything else except, like, twin tails on a girl. So, <laughs> he probably would have been fine with that. But, yeah. uh, here, I actually found... What I what I said in uh, Skype whenever I started watching this shit like yesterday it was um I was put by the way Sean I'm like ten minutes into the first episode what the fuck I'm probably gonna <laughs> like this show <laughs> then like five minutes later it's like okay another five minutes in and I don't know <laughs> like yeah then I said something about like I I was like more into it until like the gender swap stuff happened like with him turning into the magical girl and all that like he just straight up turns into a little lolly girl and it's just like what the fuck? There was no reason for that. There really wasn't. <sighs> Besides, I guess you could say the concept was because he loved like twin tails so much, he was the strongest twin tail that could be. <laughs> but the even then, even then, no. Yeah, no I don't no. care how strong your urge for twin tails is. You shouldn't become a Wally girl because of that like no no yeah no he didn't seem to mind of course he didn't mind there there were there were a couple actually genuinely funny moments that popped up because of that though like you see him at one point he uh there's like fucking twirl or whatever so creepy and she like has like cameras everywhere now like whenever she ends up like me with him and everything she's like some outer space alien and everything who gives him she's the one who gave him the bracelet and all that and you see it's like halfway through the series or something he ends up going to the bathroom and all that and she's just watching him on the fucking like monitors and shit and he's just going to the bathroom and he's like and um he like locks the door or whatever and turns into the girl form of him and everything she's like oh i think he's finally like decided to uh like explore the female form or something like that Mm mm-hmm and then you see him, like, slowly, like, taking off gloves and everything and all that. And, uh, I forgot what he said first. And he's, like, um, whatever it feels like, like, down there or something like that. N- immediately, people are probably, like, oh, God, I know where this is going. And that was, like, the whole joke with it. And, um, he ends up, like, I don't know any other way to describe it. except like, making, like, the weird, like, noises, like, the turn-on noises or something like that. And then, like, everyone's just, like, oh, God, like, the, the childhood friend is... Then she looks in the monitor and everything, like, cl- uh, moving her hands from rides, and he's just, like, playing with his hair, and it's like, oh, God, it feels so good touching him with, like, bare hands or whatever, and it's like, <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah. It was also kind of creepy that he would touch all the other girls' hair, and like, <laughs> yeah. like, holding their hand, like, like a blanket or something. Just, yeah. It, it, it was pretty much like that, like a security blanket. You just, like, go and grab it sometimes and everything. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to think of this show. It's weird. If you like weird shit, go watch it. Don't expect anything out of it, though. No, nothing. No. Be know. very mindless when you go to watch the show, is my recommendation for anyone. Just Actually, clear- no. <laughs> First, if you haven't seen Samurai Life Flamenco, watch that instead, because it has the same, like, what-the-fuck atmosphere, only it's a hell of a lot better, and it's cool and funny as hell. It's... Then watch this after. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you want... If you want... If you're going to watch a series just to kind of, like, have stuff in the background... 
go ahead and turn this series on. If you want to watch a series and be entertained, watch Samurai Flamenco, because that show knows how to entertain people. Because Mr. Justice knows everything. I want to cosplay as Mr. Justice. It's so good. I think that's going to be a challenge, CJ, on more than one level. You racist. <laughs> I know <laughs> You had to take it there. I mean, Dan's not here, so someone had uh, to. Do it. That's true. This is true. All right, so I don't have anything else for that fucking anime. Yeah, except I mean, reiterating so... that it's better than Saber Marionette. So that's that going for. That's about it. Though. Hey, uh, I'm I'm on fence about that sometimes, but other times I know Saber Marionette wasn't as good. I don't know. If I took the last half of Saber Marionette and just imagine that was how the series was for the entire series, then I can kind of be happy. But at the same time, this, I don't know, this series had a lot more jokes and humor in it, but at the same time scarred me in many ways that I didn't <laughs> want to be scarred. So, thanks, Sean. Thanks a lot. No problem. I'm never going to have you on here again. <laughs> You're not allowed. At least oh. to recommend anime. <laughs> yeah, I'll, co I'll come on to talk about anime. <laughs> It'll just be stuff that we tell you to talk about instead. <laughs> uh, Alright. I don't think anyone else has anything else. So let's go ahead and move on to... Or actually, no. Yeah, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, Barely Lucifer. caught that. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Oh. I just realized I read that, like, right after we finished last week, and I kind of forgot some of the stuff that happens. You want me to yeah. tell you what happened? Because I can tell you, and then you'll be even more sad. Yeah, I remember the sad part. <laughs> okay! Just go ahead and give, give a quick uh, quick little rundown summary of the, the events that happened in 9 through 16 of that. Okay, so in 9 through 16, you had, um... You at at the very beginning of around eight, you met uh this guy named I believe it was Shino Shinohara Shino Shino Angetsu. something Shino Shino home Shino Shino home uh, Hangetsu. I'll just do Hangetsu. Hangetsu. So you meet Hangetsu, who is the dog knight. Who you for now, lo and behold, there's more than just one night so you meet Hangetsu and you kind of build a relationship with him and it's like all right cool this guy is kind of mentoring uh mentoring Yukihara and or no he's mentoring Yui he's mentoring Yui and it's cool and it's awesome and then you get hit by a sledgehammer and Hangetsu who is this really cool awesome combative knight super good at martial arts super good at martial yeah. arts dies yeah. And you just get hit, and you're like, this guy was amazing. He could do all this martial arts, and he died. And it hits really hard. Um, And then the next thing that happens is you actually find out that he has a brother, and the brother gets introduced. And the brother gets introduced, and then it pretty much stops. So that's kind of just the major things that happen. Well, you see the brother's kind of crazy, and that he's a knight as well. Yeah. Yes. He's a little bit crazy, though. So, there was a lot of good things that happened in this little section, but I want to know your opinions on it. Mainly CJ's opinion. Like if Sean didn't read it. <sighs> God damn it, Sean. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's been very good so far. I think I read it in about, I don't know, it's like 40 minutes to an hour, I believe. Yeah. Like, went in and like, blazed through it. Like, it was really good. Uh, I I didn't like... Um, the new guy at first, but then he grew on me, and it's like this dude's cool. I like him. And you will love of him. Of course, they fucking Just... decide to kill him off. It's like thanks. That's exactly what I fucking needed. So yeah. Um. Right. I definitely enjoyed how. Um, what the fuck is her name? Sami Dare or something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the yeah. princess. Yeah, I was call it the princess because that's easier for me to remember. But um, yeah, he kept like fucking with her a lot. And um, pretty much showing her, even though she's incredibly strong and incredibly fast, she, like, couldn't really touch him and everything because he was so good at, like, martial arts and everything, he he just avoided all of her attacks like it was fucking nothing. And um, was showing her that she needed to train so much and everything and actually pushed her to train a lot and everything 
and um, tune up sparring with him and stuff a little bit, and was actually getting her built up some and all that. And um, he was about to actually start with the the main guy as well, like training him and everything. Whenever whenever the fucking shit happened at the end there, uh, that yeah. that made me probably just as sad as when Caesar died. Yeah, it's it was a very it was a very it's very saddening, but it goes to show you that like a one man team can't take on these golems. Like it goes to show you that this guy who was awesome at martial arts knew all this crazy stuff could not take on this golem by himself. Like yeah. he couldn't well, it do sh- it. It mainly shows that he's still human. Yeah. Like it you're, also you're shows- still just a human. I mean, no matter how good you are at all this, even if you have like the night powers and all that, you're still just a human. So if you fuck up, you're you're. If you get punched by this thing, it's going to kill you, probably. Like, it did him. Like, it's it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what did you think about the princess's father? Because he was introduced in this in this uh, arc. Oh, in this little... yeah. He, he was pretty cool. He was a little bit creepy. Because he was, like, being all super stalker and shit and all that. Yeah, he was being super stalker. But dude, dude's pretty cool though. Like he he did it for good reason and all that, which I I don't condone stalking. Don't fucking take that out of context. <laughs> but uh, like he was just looking after his daughter, looking at the new friends that she had and everything and all that. And because uh, I think she just turned sixteen, and that's why he came back for her birthday and stuff. Yep. And uh, I mean, yeah, he was he was ended up being pretty cool, and li- I liked him and everything. Yeah, he, he's uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah. I was happy to see that you got to see a little bit more backstory on the princess. Like, it showed oh, just yeah. a little bit more backstory on her. Um, yeah, I thought that was actually really interesting how she pretty much took this, like, pact type of thing and everything because she was so weak and, like, so sickly and all that. Yep. So that way she could... I think it's... I think that's when she decided she was going to destroy the Earth and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> she said I'd use that power to do it because she was going to end up dying around that time anyway or something like that. So that ended up being pretty powerful and showing why she wanted to do that, and uh, yeah, it was it was good. That that gave a, like that ba- little just a little chunk of backstory, just like probably five pages at most, really yeah. changed how like how it impacts you and why she's doing what she does. Yep, it it really does. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, let's see what else. Um, so what did you think of? The Dog Knight's Wish. You did you mean the warning? No, the wish. I don't remember what the wish was if it's been revealed yet. No. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at it right now and it was the warning. He left uh, it was the warning? Yeah, he left Yuhi with a warning. I thought I think you said something about your wish has been granted or something like that as like yes. a phrase to the guy, but that was it. Yes. He didn't what say do you what think the wish that was. wish was? Is my was what my question was. Uh, something to do with his brother, probably to help him out, help him, like, I don't know, fucking help him out somehow, I have no idea other than that. Because, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like it could possibly be a little bit like that, because that's around when his brother comes back and everything was soon after that. But it also could be he just came back for, like, the funeral or something like that, I don't really know, I don't think he specifies why he's back. So, I don't really know. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's about all I got on that. How did you, what did you think of how, um, how Yui handled the trauma of losing, uh, Hangetsu? Don't like, remember. He, like, he... Oh, she ended up, like, pretty much just, like, sulking around by herself, right? Or well, that no, I'm, I, no, I'm talking about the main character. Yeah. Like, I'm talking him. about how he, he kind of had to deal with a lot. Like, he, he did all, like, he felt... Not only did he feel, like, responsible for what happened, but he had to do all this crazy shit. Like, he had to... He... Pretty much, what did you think of the emotional stuff that he had to go through because of Hangetsu's death? To be honest, I don't don't remember that part, I guess. it's Like I said, I I watched it or read it so quick last week, I kind of... I probably missed a few things or I forgot them already or something. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. But it was... I, I enjoyed all the stuff he kind of went through in that emotional trauma because like he like he literally kind of has an internal battle with himself and how he just constantly blames himself for what happens and everything like that 
and I, it's... Do, I do remember him blaming himself. I don't remember how he resolves that or anything, though. Um, yeah, it's uh towards the end. You um towards the very end of the sixteenth chapter, I think it's kind of resolved, sort of. But um, it's yeah, it's it was really good. I really liked everything. So let me. You think the new guy's insane? A little bit. He seems like he could go quite insane. He he seems like someone who's mostly normal but could snap at any moment. And I, I find it funny that that's like part of his personality and everything. At least from what I I believe of from what I've seen so far, because he's like super good at being popular with everyone that he meets and everything. And he, it seems like he knows how to, how to manipulate people a little bit. He seems like a straight up sociopath to me. <laughs> Like, that's the way he seems to me. He knows how to actually do all these things, and I don't know, he just seems like a straight sociopath. I don't know. Like, he just fucking, like, another thing, he just went straight up crazy whenever, um, whenever he found out that, like, the fucking main character blames, uh, Hungetsu's death on himself. He was like, so that would make you the last one who who beat him and everything, so it means beating you would mean I beat him and everything, so now I'm gonna fight you and try to kill you or something like that. And I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot more fighting with him later on. So interesting, interesting, interesting. So yeah. Um one thing I enjoy about this series, and you have gotten to see this a little bit, um, is how much kind of just like they they just hang out. Like they're like human beings, they drink beer, they hang out, they like go to arcades, and it's just kind of like almost a little bit of a slice of life sometimes. Oh yeah, that's one thing. That's one reason I've been loving it because that's that's my style of anime. That's the shit that I fucking love. So, like all that being in this, because I it's it's like the same thing with um the Monogatari series. I'm fine with action if it's not like the main focus or if it's integrated really well into everything else. I'm completely fine with it. And that's kind of how it is with this, where it's just like every now and then it's like, oh shit, there's a goal. I should hit the fan. Plot point: somebody dies and all that. Whatever they use it to progress stuff. And it uses it to show that uh, the main character is actually building up strength and a variety of other things. And, like, the thing is, though, like, it's mostly a, a slice of life type of thing where it's showing all the emotional and, like, character development of people. And just overall, like, it's it's not about the action. It's about everything else that happens around and, like, around the action and not focused on the action, which is real nice. That's, like I said, that's that's pretty much the style of anime that I love. Whether it has the action or if it has other things that cause drama or whatever. But they just have these mechanisms to push the plot forward. Whether it be action or not. So, yeah. it's It's been great. I've, I've been enjoying it because of that. I think I kind of talked in circles there for a minute, but whatever. That's fine. Yep. It's... It's, it's nice. I also enjoyed how um, the princess kind of used, like, so... The two, Yui and um, Hengetsu's brother, were actually fighting each other. And right as Hengetsu was about to, like, pounce on Yui, um, the princess came in and actually pulled one of Hengetsu's moves on his brother. And I felt that oh, was yeah. kind of like, almost kind of like... It was a like rem- a special move or something, and it ended yeah. up, like, sending the other dude flying and all that. Yep. It was it was very nice um, yeah. to see, and she was like crying because she like was like I didn't waste my time with that character, and I was like that just feels kind of nice. Yeah. So yeah, it's the, the character it's growth nice. that it's shown in sixteen chapters has been great. Like huh. stuff like that has been <laughs> it's it's been good. Uh, I can't wait till you get farther al- along in the story. Oh yeah, I know. So, anyways, that will be it for Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. I'm glad to see you're enjoying it so far. Well, I know it would. I mean, me, me and you have very similar tastes in what we like, so I'm... Like, a recommendation for you is probably going to be good, as long as it's not just straight, like, generic shonen. So. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't really have anything else on that. You have any questions, comments, or anything, Roberto? No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I read this a while ago. Yeah. Or are you actually following along with us? Uh, every, yeah, every time you guys talk about it, I run through the chapters. All right. And I'm assuming you don't have anything for us, Sean? Um, I read chapters that we talked about last week. It seems cool. You yeah, you yeah. now have my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darn it, Sean. All right, cool. So, uh, 
Yeah, let's move on to other anime and manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week. Uh, I'll go ahead and start off. I got caught up on uh, both Fuka and Domestic Nakanojo as well. And did did you read the latest of Domestic Nakanojo, Roberto? I don't know, because I read chapter 34, and then like 35.5 came out. There's actual 35 out, too. Yeah, so I don't know where that one is. I haven't read that one yet. Oh, that's the one I want to talk about so much. Ah. Uh, has to do with that key. Probably. Oh, I, I saw that at the end of 34, he got the key. I was like, oh, snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave you with that. Because he's just, like, going back and forth between the two girls, pretty much. Uh, I don't know where that's going to go right now. Right? I mean... It's it's leaning more towards the side after that chapter, so I don't really know. It depends on how next chapter goes, really. I suggest you read that and get back to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to find it. Because it isn't on my site that I read it. Alright. I think it's about all I read outside of this. Did I don't watch anything? Probably watch something. Let's go. Did like what, what else did you read or watch, Roberto? So, uh, pretty much the new season's starting up. And I picked up the second half of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Um, what else did I grab? Oh yeah, the new High School DxD came out. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We will. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's I'll save that for the last of the stuff we've been watching this week. Cause that's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Ace of the Diamond started a second season. I don't know why. They literally didn't even take a break after season one. They just went <laughs> right into season two the following week at a different time. Oh, um, I just remember, did any of you watch uh, the first season of I Can't Understand What My Husband Is Saying? No. Because uh, that one started back up, too, and I watched the, the first episode of that because that, uh, yeah. that, was, that was pretty damn good. Yeah, and there's a few others I'm looking to pick up this season. Uh, Ore Monogatari, My Love Story. What that translates to, and uh, season two of Nisekoi. I still need to actually watch that because I read the manga. Like I got caught up with the manga roughly probably six months to a year ago, and I haven't checked out the anime yet. I mean, if you want to see all that awesome shaft goodness, yeah, that that's the reason I'm probably gonna watch it just because it's, it's yeah. gonna take something that's already pretty good anyway and just cover it in shaft. And it's like I yeah, it's probably gonna be pretty good. Yes. It's pretty. I'll give it that. Oh, I started um because uh because my roommate Steven, he he decided to finally start watching Sword Art Online, so I've been rewatching. Oh, that thing a bit. there you go. That's been pretty good. I'll have to ask him what he thinks about that. Yeah, I think it's roughly like five or so in or something like that. And I think that's that's about it for me this week. Are right, you got anything you've been watching or reading, Sean? Aside from Twin Tales, because ha 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 Twin Tales. Uh, I did watch the first episode of this anime, actually, the name of it right here. Shokugeki no Soma. I just started Food with Wars. The, uh, with the I know what that is. Season. It's, uh... <laughs> it's interesting. Pretty, it's a pretty intense cooking anime. It is. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna pick that one up after a while, I just don't know when. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, <sighs> CJ, yeah. you gotta watch that one, because it we'll is see. a shonen. There's so many fucking other things I'm watching. Give me a break, man. Put it as one yeah, of the things I, I have um, to watch, then. I don't so, usually watch ongoing animes. I was hard pressured into watching this. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I cannot watch ongoing animes. I can't. Like, it at least needs to finish a season, and then I'll watch all of that season. Ah, uh, okay. Which reminds me, I need to watch Chuni season two, but whatever. Yeah, I still need to finish it. I think I'm, like, four or five away from finishing it, but I've had so many other things, like, get in the way. So glad we're, I'm gonna make these guys watch the first season of that, though. I mean, it wasn't my to watch list. I just hadn't gotten around to it. It's, so this would be a good. I'm, the fucking fight scenes are amazing. I'm gonna make you guys watch Black Bullet, which is interesting. As long as Chun Bio is not like uh, Kyokai no Kanata, or like all the action scenes were really well done and interesting, and the rest of it was just boring as shit. Oh no, the action scenes are incredibly good, but for yes. a specific reason I'm not going to give away yet. <laughs> but the fair. rest of it's actually really good, too. Like, you okay. know what I'm talking about, Sean, the two different phases yeah. of the battles yeah. and stuff? Yeah. So good. But uh, everything else is actually really well done. All the all the rest of the interactions with the characters and all the plot and everything. It's it's definitely a school life one and has some romance in there and everything. And it's, it ends up actually being a decent decent chunk of the plot as well, the, the romance stuff, but it's it's really well done. It's really funny. 
Yeah, I'm cool with that. All right, so you got anything else you've been watching or reading, Sean? Uh, no. All right, Clicker, let's see what you got then. High school DxD. Um, what else? Um, I caught. I officially caught up with. Like officially, officially, there's no more chapters for Feng Shen Ji. I finally caught up with that. That one's really interesting right now because it seems like there's almost an ending within sight. But the only problem is there's this giant fucking war they have to go through. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, Roberto, did you read the most current chapter? I did. Okay, so you now know about the whole, like, ancient dragon god almost awakening thing, right? It's 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 pretty crazy. If those guys are as strong as Haylong and Bylong, then yeah, god. that's... Yeah, oh. god. As long as they don't have, like, divine power monochrome, I think it'll be alright. I don't but, think they will. That'd be kind but they'll of have a some other. But they'll have another broken divine power, I bet. Probably. What was Baylong's? I don't remember. I think it was like something with healing. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it she, was. Yeah, because she Did used she... the last of her divine power to... I forget what she used it for, but she ended up dying because of it. I'm pretty sure it was healing. I don't think it was to heal Heilong. I think it was to heal that one, uh, that one, like, what was her name? Leon? Was that the goddess? Um, I don't anyways. remember. Anyways. That was a while ago. Or Lang, or something like that. Yeah, it was a while ago. But yeah, those things. God. Um, I I find the new, like, ancient gods to be kind of weird. Mainly because they feed off blood. But Well, they're, they're vampiric. They are that's vampiric. They are. They, they, that's they are. They're, technically, they're made out of crystals, and those crystals thrive off blood. Which, in theory, like, that's what the gods, like, always did for humans. They, they needed the humans yeah. as kind of farm. Yeah, um, that was so, established already. Yeah, they yeah, would, they would bathe in the blood of humans, and that would rejuvenate them. I mean, that's an old, like, vampiric thing. Even, like, in history, there was a woman, I forget, I think from, like, Hungary or something, that she would bathe in the blood of virgins or whatever to keep her youth. God. Yeah, it's, it's an yeah, old, old creepy. thing. Yeah. Eh. Um. Also, it seems like uh, Ago could use his spirit cannon without very many limitations. So th that's interesting. I think that might have been the power up he got from that that ancient dark one. But it didn't seem like he got a power up. It seemed like the ancient dark one was just like, "I'm gonna track you." Ha! I'm now tracking you. Well, he gave him something in return. You know, like. Here, you I give guess. me your soul at the end of the year, and you have this. Plus yes. plus his wife's soul. Yeah. Um. So, it will be interesting. It would be awesome if he had a limit break. God, I'd be so happy Is, if that isn't that, te isn't that technically his limit break? Um, I thought it was. Or was it spiritized break? I think it's... No, it's spiritized break. Um, I think you're right. That is his limit break. I'm thinking of spiritized break. Like, because they established that he didn't have, like, the, like ultimate like burning soul attack so because he was like you never finished your training blah 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 so it'd be awesome if he used that um but anyways enough of the enough about that um got caught up with that super happy with that um tower of god read that mm, just my usual stuff all right so i guess on to high school dxd then Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, this is one we've been waiting for for a while, except Sean hasn't oh, seen yeah. any of it. Oh you, yeah. You you might wanna you might wanna mute us if you don't want a whole bunch of spoilers. <laughs> gotcha. We're about to open up a whole can of spoilers. So that's a forewarning to everyone. Huge spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the first episode of High School DXD Born, Stop or just any now. of it, really. Because we're or about just to any We're, we're going to be talking about a lot of references to all the episodes, too. Cause we will be. I, I have a feeling this is be going to become a regular segment for us talking about the new episode of this, so yeah. be prepared for yes. that. <laughs> just got to get Dan caught up. All right. So, I'll kick us off. So, opening scene. Boom. Surrounded by titties. <laughs> and immediately he's just like, just yells, or yells in his mind, but yells in his mind titties. It's like, yes. Or did he uh, straight up yell it? I forgot. I'm pretty sure no, he no, just... He was, he, it was he in his mind. Much, 
in his mind, he was like, TODAYS! And then, like, I think he woke up, and then Akano was walking up underneath the sheets, and I was like, ah, He had Rius in one arm, and Asha in the other arm. And Akano was fucking crawling up on him and everything. Asha was adorable. Like, when, I forget exactly what it was, but he was like, you can go back to sleep, and she was like, alright, I'll just cuddle up with you then, and I was like, that's adorable. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> I was like, immediately got, like, super pissed at Akino whenever, of course. Um, whenever she was, like, trying to, trying to, like, kiss him and do different things to him, because you know she's about to do some weird shit to him. Oh, yeah. She, she immediately got mad, and, like, <laughs> slammed, like, a pillow in her face and everything, talking to her. Yeah, oh, I loved great. the fact that there was just renovations to the house overnight. Oh, it turned into a three-story <laughs> mansion because <laughs> three-story mansion. I still do love the parents, just how accepting like, and oblivious oh, they okay, are. Okay, we have a new mansion now. Cool. The food's gonna get better. I have uh, a bigger yeah. kitchen. Yeah, it's uh, it's no fucks. It's funny. No fucks. No, no fucks are given. Um, I. So, on that note, the very next scene, it actually kind of got a serious tone. Um, as they were walking to school, Rias in her mind was like, like, Issei calls Asya Asya, he calls Akeno Akeno, but I'm just president. Like, it yeah. kind of showed a glimmer of like, oh hey, here's a little, little, little treat about what might start happening in this season, and that, to me, was super interesting. I am interesting. incredibly excited for what's going to happen because of that, because you know she's going to do some shit to try to try to make them closer and stuff, and yeah. I'm quite excited about that. So, next scene, they're in school. The ability to analyze any girl. My scouter. Oh, yeah, My scouter! The DBZ scouter. I was glad that was a reference. And yeah. the fact that that girl just on a dime turned it right around and was like, Issei, your thing down there is... Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, Didn't she say he was like more or less pretty much just calling him average or whatever too? <laughs> I think so. It was something like that. It was just hilarious, that entire scene. Um, yeah. So I I really enjoyed that scene. Um, Hell, I've enjoyed all the scenes in that so far. Um. My favorite, the epitome of this episode, was when they were at the bath. And talking about the nipples. Talking about the nipples. Yep. The <laughs> deeper like, oh meaning. The nipples could be this emotionally deep. Oh my god! It's like the yes. deeper meaning of titties. Like <laughs> it was god. So good. <laughs> that was like the epitome of this show, right it there. Was, it was. It was like the deeper so meaning of tits and nipples. It's like yes. Good. Like. <laughs> Damn it, show. Like, the second he was like, no, no, it is like a doorbell. You ring it, and then you get the moan. And I was just like, ah, oh, God, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Like, ah, oh, it was just so good. Um, yeah. It, another it thing good. I super enjoyed a lot is Issei looked like he was having trouble. Um, he kind of had almost emotional issues with, like, girlfriend stuff because of his very first girlfriend, you know, I don't know, killed him? Oh, yeah, yeah. he kept so, having, like, bad dreams and things popping back up about that and everything because was he's an, just remembering that. Yeah, which is another interesting that thing that, that they kind of fed us. That could be coming us. back. So, I, like, they they fed us a lot of little bit of things and so still... So much foreshadowing. So much foreshadowing. Yeah, and yeah. then, guess what, CJ? Um, your favorite character looks like she's about to have some emotional troubles. Mm -hmm. Guess who's gonna come in and help her out? Your Issei. Sister. Guess who's gonna start, like, getting emotional with Issei? Akano. Oh, not Akano. What? No, why do I Koneko. keep saying Akano? Koneko. Koneko. That's why. Koneko. Koneko. Koneko looks like she's having I've, emotional problems, bro. I've, I've heard some stuff from one of my buddies, uh, buddy Vince, about this, that, uh, he, he's read it, read stuff ahead of time, so he knows what's gonna happen a decent amount. He told me there about um, a little more of the emotional stuff that happens with him and her later. I'm just like, yes, this is the season I've been waiting for of this anime. <laughs> yeah, um, and that was another thing they fed fed us a little bit of. So it's it looks like the season's gonna be yeah. so good. They did everything perfect for the first episode. Can't wait to see the next next one. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna elaborate else. a little bit on some of those because uh, uh, the the reason why she it seems like she's having so much uh, emotional problems and everything is uh, because they're for summer break and everything they're actually going back to the the Grimmery, um territories in the underworld. 
which is like fucking huge amounts of space or whatever that they rule over and all that. And apparently Kaneko's going to end up seeing her sister and that's what keeps bothering her because you see a little bit of glimpses of her and everything every now and then. Yeah. And uh, that makes you what, wonder what happened between them to cause all this and what the drama's going to be with that. And um, I still love, like, because they're, they're in this fucking, for some reason, a flying train going through the underworld and everything. I don't know. Different dimension stuff. But uh, then they're attacked by a dragon, pretty much. <laughs> And and they find out that's pretty much who they're going to be training with for a while, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And I liked how how um the the dragon in his uh like arm and everything like knew the other one. They started talking about it, like, "Oh, what's up, dude? I haven't seen you in a while." <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. It's also interesting that that dragon actually got turned into a demon. Yeah, like yeah. it was one of those super rare cases that a dragon actually turned into a demon. So. <laughs> I like guess Sean came back and the look on his face is like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's that's pretty much all I gotta say. That's that was yeah. my entire list. We went over the, the, the deeper meaning of titties, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you missed that yes. part, Sean. You missed, you missed the deeper meaning of titties, Sean. This oh. is what you're missing out when you don't watch high school DXD. Gotcha. There is a deeper meaning to titties, and you must know. So good. You have to know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, um, I'm very excited for the next episode. Same here. Like I said, uh, well, this is probably going to turn into a regular, um, regular segment for us. So yeah, be prepared for that. Yeah, you got any final questions or comments, concerns, or anything, Roberto? About yeah. your your thoughts on the deeper meaning of titties? <laughs> no, they were they were covered pretty well, I'd say. <laughs> I find, it, I find it amazingly ironic that Clucker's the one who, who yeah. discussed that the most. That's right. It's, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sorry, let's, guys. Let's let's move on to our random topic of the day, so if we can get Sean back in the conversation a little bit, finally. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to go over today is um, least favorite genre. So, um, yeah, let's actually kick it off with Sean. What's, what's your least favorite genre, or at least somewhat of a least favorite genre, if you can't pick one and reasons why? Okay, um, I really don't know if it's a genre. I it's I guess maybe mystery. I don't know. My my great example of this is Kyokai no Kanata. Um, yes. Now a friend a friend pretty much coerced me into watching Kyokai no Kanata. And after watching the first two episodes, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done. So like, no, 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 stick it out until like at least the end of episode four, and then if you don't like it, then fine. So I did. And I was like, nope, just, sorry, dropping this. And it's mostly because it was just like. It was boring. Was, yeah, it was like, I don't understand why the main character has any motivation to do anything in this anime. Like, he had no reason to go up on the rooftop. He had no reason to talk to the girl. She started stabbing him, following around, stabbing him. Like, what? No, just, what? This is dumb. Then his mom is like, hey, there's a super powerful, um, what's it called? Whatever it was, coming to town. Make sure you steer clear. And I was like, why wouldn't he steer clear? He has no reason to go after it. What? <laughs> and then when I was talking to, to the friend who suggested it to me, he's like, oh, well, it's like, it's one of those animes where like everything gets explained at the end. I was like, that's no. stupid. <laughs> really? Uh, it's, well, they kind of do, but at the same time, they kind of don't. Or at least I didn't care enough because it was so fucking boring. <laughs> yeah, that I understand. <laughs> I but it's just like was... things where it's just like, I don't want to say things don't happen chronologically, but when things are like either hidden messages or things that are, really aren't explained along the way, I'm not really a fan of, like, I, I, okay, I cannot say that I hated this. I just never finished it. Please don't crucify me. But I never finished no, Haru, Haruhi Suzumiya. And what? if I told my friend, some of my friends that, they, they would kill me. The reason being is because if you watch it, I forget, I forget what, but, like, I believe that the order that it came out in is not chronological order. No, it's not. And, and so I didn't understand what was going on. I was like, I know it gets better. I know it gets a lot better. I've actually seen one of the movies. But it's just like, I guess it just, like, gets in my head that it's just like, okay, sure, things will make sense eventually, but I want them to make sense now. So you, 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 you don't watch... like anything that isn't, like, it is a little bit hard to follow or anything like that, that has too much missing for you to really understand. Yeah, and especially if, like, there are subplots within subplots, and then, like, one of those subplots becomes, like, the main plot. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on with my life anymore. That's probably why I stick for the more simplistic comedy slice of life animes but yeah i'm a little bit curious since um i i know one of the one of the more iconic ones in the past couple of years here is at least partially based off of that for the first half of if nothing else the first half of the first season which is a uh, sword art online 
because there's a fuck ton of mystery and a fuck ton of stuff. It's like, what the fuck is happening with all this stuff? Like, how? Like, True. Did, did you actually watch it and how? Like, did I, you like it? I did, and I did, and I guess, yeah, I guess the addendum to that would be if what's what's currently happening can like keep me interested, then I'm all right with it because, like, yeah, like what with Roberto was saying with Kyokai no Kanada, it was just so boring. I didn't get any of it. So if there's not even just like um action because like when i watched another like uh for watching another like not everything gets explained (laughs) yeah it really is but like i was i was still hooked by just like that was happening random death okay and then (laughs) it's just yeah it it had things to keep me interested but in kyokai no kanata's specific case it did not and then haruhi was just me being silly and not sticking around long enough so again not sure if that's a genre but yeah that's me (laughs) It's it's probably more of a subgenre typically. True. I'd I'd say. But um yeah, I, I definitely feel you there. I've had I I have had issues with that a couple times in the past because I unless it's something like this where I'm fucking forced to watch the shit anyway, even if it's something like Saber Marionette. <laughs> fuck that show. Um <laughs> Oh we could do worse. Yeah, I know you we could. We could do way fucking hate you. Worse. And I would stop doing this if you kept doing shit that was worse than that. <laughs> but we um, tend to only recommend good things. Well, that's the whole fucking point of this, is for us to recommend stuff that's good. But, I mean, Super Mario, it was a wild card, so I can yeah, forget was. that. But, uh, I, what I usually do when I'm watching an anime, especially if it's something I just pick up on my own, or somebody just says, hey, you should check this out at one point if you like this show, or whatever. And, um, I usually give them the three-episode rule, where it's like, you have three episodes to get me intrigued enough where it's like, fuck yeah, put on the next episode, or at least to the point where it's like, man, I, re- I, I think I want to know what happens next. Because usually if, if, if it gets to three and I'm not intrigued enough, it's not going to grab me typically, and I usually cut it at that point. And I've actually had some where some people told me it gets significantly better at, like, six. It's like, I don't want to wait around that long. I have too much in my backlog to watch. Like, the the mystery stuff can sometimes grab me a little bit more, though, where it's like, oh, God, what the fuck's happening with this? Like, that's the reason why I, I, I picked up so fast with another mm-hmm. is because that's one of the ones where it legitimately, like, the whole point <laughs> of the first few episodes is... You don't understand what's going on. Like, that is yep. the point of the first few episodes and everything. It expands on that, and you finally learn what's actually happening. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I occasionally extend that, like, a couple past the three. If it's like, yeah, it's kind of on the fence, and then a couple more don't get it for me, I kind of drop it. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've ran into issues with that in the past, though. So I definitely, I would definitely feel you there with, like, the one you said, like, you, you should have stuck out with it a couple more, and you probably would have liked it. Yeah. All right. Um, Roberto, let's let's hear what your your least favorite is. Here. <laughs> well, I don't think I really have a least favorite because I'll just about watch anything that kind of gets thrown my way if it's good. Like I'll watch the shit out of some shojo. I don't care. Well, I mean, I, we we did talk about something before. Uh, yeah, before I mean, recording. I guess yeah, we. But I've never <laughs> really watched any, so I can't really yeah. say it's 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 the one I'll probably stay away from the most because it doesn't interest me. So I, I, guess... I guess a better way to ask it that might actually get you to kind of pick one a little bit easier is um what's what's like the genre that even though yes I'm sure you've seen great ones and everything what's the one typically the the stuff you watch that fits in that genre or ones you don't enjoy even if they're like even if most of them you enjoy what's the one that has the most ones that just piss you off or something and you hate or something like that uh I guess filler like when shows have filler and stuff. Also oh, shonen. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. I watch. I watch a lot of shonen, and and yeah. I do. I end up skipping the filler for the most part. So it, it, did, did shonen end up being like one of your favorites and least favorites? Then? Uh, I'd say it's more like middle ground, like in the middle, because it does have like that. There's elements that I like, and there's those elements I don't like. But I don't. I don't know if I can have a least favorite. All right. Let's see. Uh, what what's yours, Clucker? Surprisingly. Um, I feel like the most common genre that I tend to shy away from the most, or and I just usually don't like, and maybe this is just because I haven't ran into a super good one yet, but most magical girl animes I don't tend to enjoy. Maybe I just haven't ran into one that actually is super good. Cause... Oh, have you watched Kore Zombie Desuka? No. <laughs> it's a really good parody on those. I think you'll enjoy the fuck out of it. Probably. Should watch Card Captor Sakura. Oh my goodness. Probably. I, like I, can, I, can I haven't seen see any that, of this. Though. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is I haven't seen much of it, but from what from what magical girl animes I have seen, 
I tend to not like them as much. Which ones um, have you seen? I've seen... Probably Sailor Moon. Well, yeah, I've seen Sailor Moon. I've seen Sailor Moon, the re- the one we recently just watched. Twin Tails. there was one Twin more. Tail. Twin Tails. And there was one more. I know the one that I always get raved and ranted about is... um. What was it Madoka Magica or something like that? You haven't seen that one yet? I haven't seen that one. You really need to watch that one. That one's really good. So, and maybe that's it. Maybe that's just it. Maybe I haven't seen one that just blows my Whoa. blows blows me away. But of nine, like so far, out of the two out of three that I've seen, like I haven't enjoyed those nearly as much as I enjoy Shonen's. What was or, the third one? other things um what was the third one because you said you haven't seen madoka magica uh, yes i have not seen madoka magica what was the third one um had a describe it they all have transformations don't give me that oh well, yeah i know i <laughs> i'm trying to remember the transformation cycle Oh, have you watched uh, Kill a Kill? Because that's technically a transformation or a magic. <laughs> ah, yeah. no, it's, it's not. If you look They're at the core the... elements, it technically is. In yeah. a way, it is, but it's I... not really what Magical Girls about. Yeah, I wouldn't say that's what Magical Girls are about. Um. Oh, of course it's not. But technically, if you just look yeah. at, hey, do they have things that make people transform? And all magical have these magical powers, and they have tons of enemies they fight, and everything's like, yep, that's that's a magical girl show, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I could see it. I could definitely see it. Yeah, I understand that. It definitely doesn't fit in with at all with like mainstream um, magical girl shows or anything. Anyway, if you can, if you think yeah, of it, it you, can, uh, you can tell us later. Yeah, Carter. I I can't think of it right now. Um, but I will inform you of it when I do. But like, there's a lot that I've seen that just it just doesn't intrigue me. Like it doesn't it doesn't pull my interest at at as much as other series does. Yeah, I've I've definitely never been one that's like pulled in by them or anything. I've never actually really tried to watch many of them. I've tried a couple episodes of a couple of different ones. It's like this is not for me. I don't like shows based on fighting anyway. And that's usually what they are. They're usually heavily based on fighting. So it's like, I, I'm not getting anything out of this. I think all of you would like Magica Magica. Because it's kind of, it's different from what normal Magical Girl is. It's kind of like a breakdown of the genre a little bit. So it's pretty interesting. Okay. Maybe eventually I'll watch it. That's that's low priority on my list, though. Unless I make you watch it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll make me watch it quicker. <laughs> Alright, cool. So um, let's... Let's go into what my my least favorite genre is here. <laughs> well, I think Which, we know already. Yeah, it's it's one than like a subgenre of that. Of course, it's fucking shonen for me. With the subgenre, the the thing that I hate the most out of my the 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 main genre I hate the most of shonen is mecha. Cause fuck that shit. It's stupid. I don't understand why people like it so much. It's just mindless violence with little to no plot and tons of filler. It's like. There, there's nothing happening. I don't understand why this is good. Like, I don't know. the The main reason I typically hate shonen is it's just like there, there, there are definitely exceptions. Like, I fucking love JoJo's. JoJo's is great. <laughs> um, but for the most part, shonen is just. It, it seems to me like, oh, there, there's all these characters. They fight. Then, oh, we need all this filler. Fuck it. Make them talk for five episodes to extend that fight. Nothing happens really. Oh, he's finally dead. Cool. Then there's Unless always they're not the... really dead. Yeah. <laughs> Bleach. Shit. See, shit like that. It just pisses me off. It's like, fucking just kill the fucker. Be done with it. Commit. Just fucking commit. <laughs> See, at least... No. I... Uh, uh, nah, there, there's no I'm reason not, for that. If you I'm want not, somebody to not... keep fighting like that, make somebody else. Make one of his followers fucking take his place or something. Fucking commit. Uh, the other thing I hate is the... Oh, you're you're beating me? Well, I just discovered this new power. I'm stronger now. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Oh, okay. Like like Dragon Ball Z had it where one time I was okay with that where it's like fuck a Super Saiyan. It's like cool! Dude's super powerful and it's like oh. fucking I don't know how how much longer fucking later or whatever, but it's like, no, it's Super Saiyan two and three. It's like <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh okay. That's the best you can think of. <laughs> Okay, cool. It's, I feel like the main reason everyone likes Super Saiyan is because how it happened. Literally, Goku's best friend just died, 
and that triggered the the turn. See, uh, like th- all the other like evolutions were just like, ha, yeah, I'm now Super Saiyan too. Yeah. Like, like there I was said, nothing... the, the first one was fucking cool. That made sense. That was like that. That was like a, a big thing where it's just like fuck. Like he he just. He literally just got to his full potential, which fucking later on wasn't or whatever, but he, he, <laughs> yeah. he like exceeded his potential and all that, and he got to the point where he could just kick ass. Like that was okay. It still it, it falls under that where they just got, discover the new power and all that and they're just stronger, but if you do that like one time, that's fine. I mean, cool, they fucking broke the barrier, they moved on and all that. But if you keep doing that, it's like, oh, Super Saiyan fucking twenty now. It's like the fuck? What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I, I hate that shit. <sighs> Power Seems to me, thing. CJ, that Dragon Ball Z left a very bad taste in your mouth. Well, just, like, I've tried watching a few others and everything. Like, I've tried Naruto and, like, fucking other ones and stuff, and it's just, like, they're running into the same fucking shit problems like that, or it's just, like, all the filler and all the bullshit and everything. Like, you could take however many, like, how many episodes of Naruto? 600. Yeah, you could probably condense that down to, like, 60 and have a fucking awesome anime. Yeah. Like, Fucking, that's that's why I love JoJo so much. It's like, they introduce a character halfway through this episode, he's dead by the end of it. Fucking done. <laughs> they resolved that shit. They found his weakness, they killed him, we're done. Moving on. <laughs> and it's funny, too. They they did a good job with the comedy there. Like, But they, they don't bullshit. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's why, I mean, minus, minus the whole Super Saiyan issue, I was happy when they released um, Dragon Ball Z Kai, because a lot of the episodes from the original was just, people talking or or something that really pissed me off goku charging a spirit bomb for an entire yeah, season pretty that much shit too, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. and so when kai came out like they cut like 90 percent of the talking like unnecessary talking and stuff and i was like wow okay this this make this See, is what it should have been this makes that's, sense that's i i probably am gonna like that if i watch that because of what i just said where they could probably cut naruto down to 60 episodes and it'll be mm-hmm. great and that's the reason why there's all that bullshit filler and everything and i mean I don't know, it just ends up being boring and not interesting to me. It, it doesn't move fast enough. Like, most of the stuff I watch is, like, 24-episode series, like, and they're done. They're, you might get another season, but, like, they start and they finish. Like, there, there's there's resolution to all that shit after... Like, they don't, we don't have to wait fucking 200 <laughs> episodes for the arc, the arc to end. Hell, I might not even remember the fucking arc by then. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much. Ugh. This is true. I can... And... I can easily oh, see why you don't like shonen because shonen runs into a lot of issues with um with with filler and stuff like that but to me i guess what attracts me to shonen so much is i never want the story to end <clears throat> ever i never <laughs> want it to end i want it to continue it's like i don't so the bakumonogatsu series still isn't over i'm happy yes, it it's is. not over it's technically not over. The novels are over. The novels are, but yeah. the animes aren't. I haven't read the novels, so it's okay. But when the last anime comes out, Roberto, I will be very, very sad. I will not be not sad as about sad as One you Piece. Think, probably, because having a good, satisfying ending <sighs> mm-hmm. is typically a lot better than dragging shit out. Like, I guess that's one reason right. I loved the end of Cowboy Bebop. Like, you're, spoilers, you're right. fucking for this, Spike's fucking dead. He can't do shit anymore. He's just fucking dead. We're done. <laughs> Although people still debate that if he's dead or not. Yes. Well, it's, well, whatever. There's, fucking there's a giant mi- minus like the fucking bullshit. Like uh, trying to figure out like, oh, maybe he's not a lot, not dead or whatever. Like if you just look at it face value, he's fucking dead. Yeah. They're done. They're not making anymore. And that is a lot better than me because they end it in the prime where it's like good and everything, and they did not stay their welcome. If you can do that, or if you can even just make, like, extensions to the plot and everything that are actually good and worthwhile, then that's fine. Like, good examples, High School DxD. I would have been, I'm completely fine that ending at the first season. I would be fine with that. Second season, fucking even better. Everything's great. Ends right there. I'm fine with that. I'm still greatly happy we're getting more, but there's, there were still a decent enough endings where it's just like, I'm fine with them not going on, as opposed to, like, extending it too much and ruining it. There, there is something to be said that there, there are points where series need to know to when to just die. Bleach needs to know when to just die. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't die. It for some reason, like the author won't let it die. Um, Naruto kind of. Money. Naruto actually. Naruto's over, so it kind of 
at kind of almost at its peak, Naruto kind of ended, and that's cool. Um, how it ended, people debate and rave across the internet for centuries to come, but <laughs> it's the point centuries, is centuries. You think it'll be really? I guarantee you, a hundred years from now, someone's still going to be ranting about the ending of Naruto. Of course Naruto. they are. So that's that's a little much, though. Centuries, really? I think people hundred years, stop man. Hundred yeah. years. Nah, there will be one person, CJ, a hundred years from now that <laughs> watches. Be the weird Naruto. guy nobody talks to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Anyways, I you, you are correct in saying that. People need, like, stories need to know when their time has come. And there is something to be said about that. And I completely agree with you on that aspect. Even um, even not just, like, know when their time to end comes. Know when their time to take a break. Like, oh, there's no true. more manga. Fucking stop then. Wait. The I mean, only... I know you're making money, but dude, like, yeah. you can make your shit so much better. It's, it's, it's true. Um... And a good example of a series that actually took time and made a series freaking spectacular, and I'm sorry I'm going to mention this, CJ, but is a series known as Gundam Unicorn. So Gundam Unicorn released six episodes and then a really long last episode. Every, I believe it was, it was a really long time. It was like six months per episode is what they were releasing. But the quality of each episode was stupendously awesome. Like, it was fantastic how, like, the fight scenes were, the quality of the voice acting, everything about it was amazing. Just, but the reason why it was so good is because they took, like, six months to make a episode. And they took that time, and it showed in their anime. And there's something to be said about that. So I can agree with you that shonens lack on some aspect. They they lack in a lot, but you know whatever. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I I I think I'm pretty much done with my rant on that. I don't really have anything else. <laughs> nope, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Um. Cool. Anybody have anything else? Any last minute stuff or anything? Nope. Mm, I got nothing. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you about to pass out over there, Sean? No, I was I was actually trying to think. I was like, hmm, is there any any last minute things <laughs> to right. to say? Cool. Um, I think that about wraps it up then. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, Sean, for actually uh coming and filling our guest slot and everything here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been good. Um, go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you and if they want to follow you or stalk you or whatever and everything. Right. Well, you know, I mean, stalking is fun. Um, it can be. so. Uh, I mostly just stream, although I haven't been recently, but I plan to get back into it. Uh, and that's at twitch.tv slash RoyShadow, R-O-Y Shadow. Um, and I'll always announce when I'm going live on Twitter, which is at Nexus99, N-E-X-A-S-99. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's about it for now. Cool. Um, Roberto, if you want to tell them where they can find you at and everything. Sure. Just hit me up on the internet at RJR2992. All right, Clucker. All right, you can find me pretty much almost anywhere at, as Boclex, B O W K L E K S. I have a Twitter account called O Clucker, O H K L E K E R. All right, and I am pretty much Boom Coffee everywhere. I, I, yeah, Steam, Skype, fucking, well, not Skype. I'm not going to add you on Skype because that's creepy. But um, my anime list and like Twitter and all that other shit, you can find me as Boom Coffee, so. Oh, and where they can find Roberto. Tell them where they can find all the podcast stuff at. Sure. I always forget. Go over to uh, pseudorandom.wordpress.com for our blog. Our Twitter is pseudo underscore pod. Our YouTube channel is pseudo random entertainment. So look for that as we may have some other things there. And also on my anime list, see what we're watching, see what we have watched and what's to come. All right, cool. Um. Yeah, thanks everybody for uh, listening. If you made it this far, because this is this has been one of the more iffy episodes in my opinion. <laughs> but whatever, uh, I'll, I'll just blame that on the on the guest here whenever he's gone. So, <laughs> all right, thanks again for uh, being here, Sean. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody. Thanks. All right, See bye. you guys later. See ya. See ya.